Microbes are tiny organisms that live inside, outside, and all around us. Some microbes are harmless, and many even help us to digest our food, make vitamins, or fight off infection. However, some microbes are harmful and make toxins that cause us to get sick. How do we stop microbes from making things that hurt us without harming the microbes that help us? One approach is to use antibiotics to kill harmful microorganisms that cause infections. However, some bacteria are resistant to currently available antibiotics, and sometimes antibiotics can also harm bacteria that help us. Gram-negative bacteria are particularly resistant to certain types of antibiotics. These bacteria have both an inner membrane and an outer membrane, which makes it difficult for antibiotics to enter the cell. This hinders the treatment of diseases like the sexually transmitted disease gonorrhea and acinetobacter infections in intensive care unit patients. One way to overcome this problem is to inhibit the assembly of the outer membrane that protects these bacteria. LPTB is part of the protein complex that bridges the inner and outer membranes to transport membrane components from where they are made in the inner membrane to the outer membrane. LPTB is an ATPase that powers this process by converting the high energy molecule ATP into ADP. Better understanding of this process could perhaps lead to its interference and provide better treatment for these diseases. LPTB is just one example of microbial enzymes that affect human health. Enzymes are specialized proteins that carry out millions of chemical reactions that take place within every cell. Each enzyme binds a specific set of molecules, which we call substrates, and converts them into different molecules, which we call products. Some of these products can be toxic to humans. One example, which we first found in the gut microbe Disulfovibrio desulfuricans, is trimethylamine, which is generated from the essential nutrient choline by the microbial enzyme choline trimethylamine lyase, or CUT-C for short. Trimethylamine then enters the bloodstream and is converted into trimethylamine oxide by the liver. High levels of trimethylamine oxide have been shown to increase risk for heart disease. If we could inhibit CUT-C, we might be able to slow this disease progression. But how do we go about finding ways to stop enzymes like CUT-C from making molecules that hurt us? One way is by generating computational models of these enzymes. This is particularly useful with enzymes that are difficult to study experimentally, like CUT-C, which can't function in the presence of oxygen. Unfortunately, there are over 10 to the 600 different structures that we could make from the amino acid sequence of CUT-C, far too many to go through one at a time. However, by basing the computational model on known structures of similar proteins and using tools from physics and statistics to combine them, we can make a possible structure that could help us figure out how to inhibit this enzyme. A different approach is to try to understand how these enzymes work biochemically. By testing how different mutations affect enzyme activity, we can start to see what regions of the enzyme are important for proper function. Once we know how the enzyme works, we can more easily design better inhibitors. By gaining a better understanding of how enzymes work, we can better design small molecules that inhibit their activity and that possibly have a chance to help us fight heart disease, drug-resistant infections, and many more microbially-related diseases.